Hello, I'm Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmadge, we offer these short Bible studies on the lectionary series. This week we are in Pentecost 8, and our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. Before we get started, let's pray. Good and gracious God, as we get ready to jump into your word, Lord, um, bring to us new ways of hearing about Jesus' healing and Jesus' compassion. May we look at compassion in uh, perhaps some new ways in which we hadn't considered before. And God, may you guide us into acts of compassion for the sake of the other. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we take a look at where we're at in Mark chapter 6, we find ourselves kind of in an interesting spot in our lectionary reading. It's divided up. We have at the very beginning here of our reading in 30 to 34, it's the introduction to Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we skip over Jesus uh, feeding the 5,000 and we skip over Jesus walking on water and we find ourselves at the end of Mark's chapter. But there's a lot that happens in chapter 6 as you've been hearing in these past few weeks. So let's take a look at some of the things that have been happening. In, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is rejected in his hometown in chapter 6. He sends the 12 on a mission. John the Baptist is killed. Jesus feeds the 5,000 and Jesus walks on water. These are all major events in Mark's narrative, so much so that what we read today seems kind of trivial in comparison. But I think sometimes we need to stop and think about the trivial because perhaps there's some insight in there that we hadn't quite thought of before. As we look at these passages that make up the gospel reading for today, they serve in important ways to bring forth the concerns that the gospel writer named Mark had. The most important being the inauguration of the kingdom of God. These verses emphasize Jesus's identity as the true divine shepherd who will guide a sheep into the kingdom and the nature of that kingdom through healings that disrupt the economy of this world. So let's take a look at our reading. If you have your Bibles, please open them to Mark chapter 6 at verse 30. If not, just follow along on the screen. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that made a, that the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. So as we look at this passage, we kind of uh, can see three essential parts to it. And even though it's broken up with the, with the two miracles left out, I think there's some important tidbits that we can learn here about Jesus's compassion. The first is Jesus and his disciples needing time to decompress, to debrief and to share almost like going over a case study that one writes in seminary. The disciples have just come from the exhausting work of sharing this good news of the kingdom of God, and they need time to share about their healings, to share about the people they met, to debrief about the ways the Holy Spirit worked and why some were healed and some were not. Time to take in all that they experienced and time to learn from the other disciples and what they saw. Perhaps there was a lot to learn from each other's experiences and they needed some time to rest. But according to Mark's gospel, there is no time for this. There is an immediacy throughout the text and the good news of the gospel is something that should not be placed on hold. We read in the text that there was not even time to eat. When was the last time you had so much work to do that you could not 
even eat. The second item, Jesus shows compassion. They tried to get rest, but were recognized and were greeted by a large crowd, and Jesus had compassion on them. Compassion, as you know, the Greek word for compassion has its root in a word that means guts and the seat of feeling, feeling it in your gut. You know that feeling where your reaction is something sends your stomach churning. You get a hitch that you sense physically or primitively. You feel that pit suddenly, even painfully. That's compassion, a visceral feeling. Jesus has compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, lost, lacking guidance, but more so in need of care, of protection, of pasture, of tending, of nurture. But for Jesus, compassion is not just a feeling, but a doing. And Jesus had to show his followers that compassion is inherent to discipleship. Compassion is a requirement on your part, even more so an urge on your part. It hits you in the gut and sends you into motion for the sake of the other. Think about its etymology. To have sympathy with, co-suffering, passion together. And so, this gut feeling should cause you to go outside of yourself. That feeling deep in your gut that radiates throughout your whole body like an adrenaline rush. Well, it will not go away unless you let it go into the places and spaces that need it and need it desperately. Caroline Lewis writes this from her workingpreacher.org in 2015. So one of the questions I have for us today is, can we be complacent in our compassion? Jesus showed compassion at all times, even um, putting others first before his hunger, putting others first before he would take time to rest. And it appears that, especially in Mark's gospel, that there wasn't a lot of time to decompress that this needed to be heard and needed to be raced out there. And so for us today, is it easy for us to become complacent in our compassion? I think all too often our compassion can become complacent. We might feel it, but don't do anything about it. We don't act on it. Don't advance its essential truth, that there is no compassion unless it's known by the other. And deeply. And the feeling of compassion can also be an opportunity for some radical reorientation. Time to ask the question, what needs attention? What issues need tending to? What needs nurture? Or where are you lost? And maybe even asking, what are you paying attention to? Or who are you paying attention to? Jesus says that his compassion is based on it. The gospel writer tells us that it's like sheep without a shepherd. So why does Jesus have compassion on them? Because he sees that they were like sheep without a shepherd. That is such a poignant and powerful image, isn't it? And I suspect many of us often feel that we are in that position. If that's the case, then what would it look like for Jesus to show compassion to these shepherdless sheep in Mark? You might be anticipating something like how Jesus healed the sick and took the children into his arms. That's not what the text says here. What does Jesus do? And he began to teach them many things in Mark 6, 34. We don't often think of teaching as being compassionate. Have we thought about when we share our faith stories with others, that an act of compassion? Perhaps it is. And in the third part that's essential to, this, to these passages, we see that Jesus heals. In verse 56, it says that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. This is kind of a unique connection that Emery Powery, Powery made in his commentary. And it goes all the way back to Numbers 15, 34 to 40 as it talks about the fringe. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and tell them to make fringes on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a blue cord on the fringe at each corner. You have the fringe so that when you see it, 
you will remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And do not follow the lust of your own heart and your own eyes. For you shall remember and do all my commandments and you shall be holy to your God. Henry Powers writes that this might be a symbolic approach to this section, and it might suggest that salvation or restorations, meaning of salvation, of Zozo, for sheep without a shepherd, is to return to the commandments of the Lord, represented by the fringe on Jesus' cloak, which is like putting safety or security boundaries around the sheep. Or perhaps, to put it in more graceful terms, Jesus, as the shepherd, brings structure to chaos, wholeness to brokenness, food to the physically, mentally, and spiritually hungry. So as we looked at the short pericope that we had today, um, I'd like you to think of some questions or to, to think of maybe some answers to these questions, right? And if you have some questions, I'm, Pastor Steve and I are always open to uh, answer any of your questions you have. Just email us. One of the questions I have for all of you today is Jesus' role models for us many ways of showing compassion to others. Do you have a way of showing compassion to others that has surprised you? Have you ever considered teaching as an act of compassion? Have you ever found yourself to be cynical instead of compassionate? And why? As we took a look, a quick look at compassion this week, um, I hope that you have time to think about maybe even photographs where you have seen images of compassion. And in those images of compassion, do you see Jesus in it? Maybe it's not an actual picture of Jesus, but maybe you see someone showing Christ-like attitude, acts of compassion towards the other. I pray for all of you this week that you might find a way uh, of God leading you and guiding you to an act of compassion. And it may be something that doesn't surprise you, but maybe God has a surprise in store for you as to whom he is guiding you to, to show an act of compassion to. God's blessings to you this week.